I tell you, you know you're a hard worker when you got to get off work and drink some coffee. <sighs> Greetings, y'all. It is Minister Kev, the hard worker. Grace be unto you. Peace and blessings from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I know you heard the news today. Man, wonderful news. June 24, Friday, 2022, the Supreme Court has made the right decision and got rid of Roe vs. Wade, basically got rid of abortion. I wish they would have got it, you know, got rid of it totally. But what it really does is that it allows for the states to decide. I'm, I'm in one of these southern states, so they're going to decide right. Now, the West Coast is going to be like in an abortion haven. You know, that was to be expected. That's why a lot of us are not on the West Coast anymore. It's first degree premeditated baby murder. It's human sacrifice. You know, they give it a fancy name, abortion. So that was the great news today. The judges have made the right decision in the Supreme Court to get rid of Roe vs. Wade, basically. Amen. Now, I was looking at some of the headlines. You know, they're all upset with Clarence Thomas. Because they said, hey, we're not done yet. You know, we need to really reconsider same-sex marriage. And I would say that Clarence Thomas... Clarence Thomas, stand strong. The prayer warriors and those who can get a prayer through are with you to continue. To, I mean, the fight remains. Get rid of same-sex marriage. On this channel, we constantly talk about it. We constantly preach against it, abortion, uh, same-sex marriage. And I'm so glad that the transgender swimmers can no longer compete against the women. I believe that was shot down. So that's wonderful, amen. Now I say the fight is not over, you know, it's just beginning. I saw how these uh, wacky liberals, you know, who would take to the streets, they're calling it a night of rage. Oh, let's target Clarence Thomas in Miss Thomas' house for what he said. He wants to reconsider same-sex marriage, man. Get rid of that stuff. It's an abomination in the sight of God. You know he has destroyed whole nations behind homosexuality. Get rid of that mess. You look in the Bible. Some of the kings who did the right thing, they got rid of the sodomites in the land. So you must do it. Because that behavior is bad for the environment. Y'all are always talking about the environment. Now you're talking about my body, my choice. But when the shot came around, y'all weren't saying that. You know? So this is a good thing. But let's even look further in the Word of God. And also be on watch, because they're talking about a guy that was made, you're going to bring back out Antifa, and you got all these weird old rainbow flags with big Dumbo uh, uh, ears hanging down, big chunks out their ear and tattoos and all this foolishness. So we definitely are on guard. But those like myself who have been fighting strong, even the organization I came from is fighting strong, and, and I appreciate and I respect that. I learned a lot. You know, we fight against same-sex marriage, abortion. And willful acts of sin, of course. Not just that. Psalm 139. Let's start about verse 13. It says, For thou hast possessed my reins. In other words, possess means create. Reins is talking about the inward parts. Now, this is the psalmist. In this case, this is the psalm of David. Talking about how God has created his inward parts. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Now, let me stop right there. Remember the prophet Jeremiah said, Before thou formest me in the belly, thou knew me. So God knew us before he formed us, even in the belly. He knew us. He had a plan. Let's continue reading. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written. Let me stop right there. So all our members, all our body parts, how long our toes and fingers are supposed to be, all that stuff is written. God knows. Just look at your hand and your fingerprints. Nobody has the same fingerprints. Amen. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. All you got to do is look at your fingerprints. 
Amen. For the sake of time, I'm still in Psalm 139. Look at verse 19. It says, Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. That's right. Even the wicked is made for the day of evil. Depart from me, therefore ye bloody men. You know, God hates the shedding of innocent blood. So who knows, maybe the Most High will relent some of the anger that he has toward America for 50 years of abortion. But now they're making steps toward repentance, steps towards righteousness. And this is a good thing. But don't stop there, amen. We got to get rid of same-sex marriage. Because we have an example of those who suffer the vengeance of eternal fire. Turn our Bibles to around, let's go Psalm, the second chapter. It says here, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? You know, the Bible calls these individuals uh, the LGPP of uh, mafia, uh, the sodomite mafia. They are inventors of evil things, saying that a woman can uh, transform into a man and a man can transform into a woman. These are inventors of evil things. No such thing in the sight of God. Amen. So why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Nobody, you know, in their right mind should be out protesting that abortion is done away with. Nobody in their right mind. It's nothing but a bunch of hateful and unclean birds who will be out there talking about a night of rage. You better leave Clarence Thomas alone and his wife. So why ain't nobody hollering a racism now? You know, y'all quick to holler racism. You got a black man who made the right decision as a judge. Now you want to kill him. This world is backwards. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let me stop right there. They take counsel against the father and against his Christ. You see, anointed means Christ. They take counsel against the Father and the Son. Now let me skip down to verse number four for the sake of time. It says, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. <laughs> God is laughing at these foolish people. The Lord shall have them in derision. See, the Lord is going to do the mocking. You know, just like I learned from the forefathers, Elijah, how he would mock the prophets of Baal. Amen. I do the same thing I learned from Elijah. Where's your God? Maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he's on a journey. And we do the same thing when it comes to falsehood. When it comes to this sick immorality. A man wearing a dress. We mock them. Let's skip to verse number 12. It says, Kiss the son. Amen. Notice this capital S. O-N. King David. Prophesying about the seed of David about the Son of God, way back in the Old Testament. It says, kiss the Son. That's why we have to reverence and lift up Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. We lift him up, not your pastor, not your so-called prophet or apostle, but Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Amen. It says, kiss the Son, lest he be angry. And ye perish from the way. Well, there's only one way. There ain't a whole lot of ways that lead to God. There's only one way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So we put our trust in the Son of the living God. Amen. And we thank God for everybody who prayed. I know on this channel I was one of the first to break the leak that the Supreme Court was going to make this decision or they were thinking about it. And now, lo and behold, they made it. So I say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. It's a good thing. And there were others who prayed, amen, even on this channel, amen, and we got the victory on that level. We'll take it. We need all the little victories we can get, you know, amen. So I want to get on here and make sure I said, man, it's a, it's a great day to see this happen. The fight is far from over, man. Like I said, you're with the same-sex marriage. And let's, you know, get rid of all this curriculum where you're teaching about same-sex and uh, trans.
transgender swimmers, man. We got to get, get, get rid of all this stuff. We got to stand up as men and women and people of God. Amen. So that's what it is, you know. Uh, just want to keep you in remembrance. And say a few good words of exhortation to continue in this fight and pray without ceasing. Until the next time, y'all be blessed.